Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're talking about Whatnot. If you don't know, Whatnot is an app where you can buy and sell nerd things. Magic the Gathering cards, Pokemon cards, old video games, new video games, and specifically comic books. So um, I'm coming at this from the perspective of a Whatnot buyer, and I'm also coming at it from the perspective of a Whatnot seller. So as a seller, you have to apply and get approved. They basically like check your rep and see if you have some sort of a following, whether that be on Instagram or uh, social media of some sort, YouTube channel, yada, yada, yada. They kind of verify you in that way. And then you have to do this onboarding where you have to schedule a live chat where you're in with other people talking about the ins and outs of selling on this service. I think whatnot is bad for not only buyers, but it's also bad for sellers. As a seller, the fees are absolutely brutal. Payment isn't received if you sell books until the books have been delivered, and sometimes it's not even upon delivery, it's several days after that. It comes in in increments of money. It's not, um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of finicky in that way. If you don't have a large follower base on whatnot, it's extremely difficult to get what you're expecting out of your books. So it doesn't carry over between uh, your YouTube audience or your Instagram audience or whatever. You have to get people to follow you on this WhatNot app in order to build a fan base, a follow, follow base on that app. So that can be extremely difficult. And it's also just another thing clogging up your, your, your feeds of, Hey, go follow me on whatnot for your ten dollar free, your your free ten dollars on on whatnot, and it's like, okay, and now I have to go sign up on this whatnot, and I have to go. It's just it's just one more thing you have to do. So it's clumsy in that, and it, it is trying to directly compete with eBay. So and herein lies the big issue. So as a seller on eBay, you know you have to have you you pay fees. And for comics, it's pretty steep. I think the percentage for selling on eBay is like 12.9%, maybe 13%. So it's it's pretty hefty. Whatnot's percentage is hefty as well. It's it's pretty extensive. I mean, if you sell something for like a dollar, you can expect to get, I'm thinking like 55 cents or something. I mean, it's bad. Maybe 59 cents. Some of the things that I'm seeing and I'm remembering. When you're doing this, when you're selling on whatnot, you have to look through the phone. Now, I know they've made some changes and they've updated it, but basically you're looking at your screen, you're filming something ahead in front of you, and you're monitoring the chat and making adjustments on the fly. And therein lies another issue. So you can pre-set up all this stuff before, all your, all your listings before you go in which takes significant amount of time typing all this in setting all these up and then if they don't sell it's just so discouraging but another thing is is when you can set these things up as auctions you have to do it like on the fly so like i'm setting up an auction i'm i'm wanting to set this for two uh, one minute uh starting at one dollar or whatever good luck because if you don't have a high enough follower base you don't have enough people in there you can get absolutely screwed. I mean, people are just absolutely stealing books at that point. So it's literally the wild, wild west. And especially for your first sale, and you're not going to know what you're doing. You're not going to know how the app works because there's not, I mean, there is tutorials on it, but it's just, it's not the same as when you're getting in there. It's real money. There's real people. It, you know, you're trying to be entertaining. It just, it sucks. It also feels completely impersonal. So when I've done these live sales on my channel, some of you guys may have tuned in and actually bought something. Thank you. It just feels like it's more of a community. It feels like I'm talking to people. I'm, I'm providing not only entertainment and I'm providing the items, I'm providing the service. It just, it's a whole thing. It, it, it feels more personal. Like I'm actually connecting that are buying from me. So I don't, I don't like whatnot in that regard as a seller. The positives are it's easy payment. So like when somebody buys something, I mean, it. if the payment is accepted and received, it goes directly in there, it's processed. And also like batching orders, 
and getting things organized by lots like that once it's all finished, that is super easy and it takes a lot of the, the legwork out of doing this yourself. So, I mean, it's not all negative, but man, the negatives are definitely there. Now, as a buyer, this is where it gets significantly worse. So as a buyer, you are, it's, it's basically exploiting your FOMO, your fear of missing out. And especially as a millennial, and many people in this game are millennials, many of the sellers are millennials, many of the buyers are, are millennials on whatnot. We have this ingrained thing in us where uh, if we, it, 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 we, we feel like we're missing out on something. I mean, that's, that's the identity of social media. Like you see somebody's uh, incredible Instagram post where they're going to Mount Fiji and they're climbing Mount Everest. And, and I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, I, I'm sure that's actually happening. But there's that little spark in you. It's like, oh my God, am I missing out? Is my life failing? Well, that it kind of captures that essence all condensed down in, into this app where you're competing against people in real time for auctions and it's it's very you know it, the the money you can see the money flying you can see people bidding you know it's and i mean there's a big button at the bottom and it's just so easy boom bid um it's 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 too easy and it's too scary and it's too fast so with a minute auction you don't have any time to go uh, do your own research, do your own due diligence of fair market value, evaluations of what this is worth. You know, if you're buying something on eBay, you can actually look closely at the item, hover over, you know, see in, see defects the best you can. If there's good photos, you can go do your research. What are the other listings selling for? What's the sold items for? What what what's it on cover price? Whatever your app or website you use, what is your what have, what has been sold? But many times as a buyer, you're paying more than fair market value for something because it's that competition of that auction. It's almost like a competition of, oh, I know what that book is more than somebody else. Now, I haven't spent like any kind of crazy money on whatnot. I think I've bought from like two or three people and I felt like a complete scumbag. I felt like crap after I bought from there. I felt like I got ripped off, taken advantage of. The shipping price is is ridiculous. Shipping prices are too high. Um, it it's like you buy one item and then you add on another dollar, another dollar, another dollar for every single uh, additional item. It it just gets out of hand quick. And then you look and you're like, oh my god, I just spent thirty dollars and I don't even know what the hell I just bought. So it's just um, it's just very dangerous. And I think it's really bad for the comic book community. Uh, I see a lot of guys on there doing like mystery box things and uh, it, it just it just feels like gambling. It feels like um, just getting money now, getting that cash now, quick quick cash, get rich quick scheme. Um, it, it just feels dirty, it feels shallow. I think the whole mindset of it is predatory and even and this is I'm gonna kind of end on this is when I was in the training, they basically were talking about super successful other comic sellers, and they didn't say names, but I can pretty much assume who these people are, where they were saying books were going for more than fair market value, like I was saying. They were saying, like, you can you can do that too. Like, that's how you can really uh, maximize your, your gains and your profits of uh, selling for more, because people will pay for more. If they're having a good experience and they like you as a seller, they'll pay more. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is this is crazy. Like you're this is basically exploitation. This is predatory. This is taking advantage of somebody because it's in that moment of I didn't have enough time to do research. I didn't have enough time to look it up. And it's like you don't even know what the hell you just bought. You could have bought a freaking low grade piece of crap just because you saw that, you know, you saw that ASM uh, 316, you saw that uh, you know, Fantastic Four 48, and you're like, oh my God, I know what that is. I, I, I know what that is. I'm going to click that and, and buy that as soon as possible. And it's like, oh man, and you don't know what you've just bought. The camera is all blurry. It's maybe in 720p. I, I mean, none of this is high definition from what I'm, from what I've seen. And I literally have an, like an iPhone 13 or whatever. I don't even know what number it's on, but it's crazy. What not is the wild, wild west. It's insane. It's the wiki wiki wild wild west. That reminds me of uh, 
that movie with uh, Will Smith. That, that movie was terrible. Anyway, what not? Be careful. If you're buying, if you're selling on there, be careful. This is a cautionary tale. I'm done with Whatnot. I deleted the app. Um, and unless things change significantly, which I don't think they will, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. Let me know what you guys think. Are you Whatnotters? Do you sell on Whatnot? Do you buy on Whatnot? Do you like Whatnot? Do you even know what the hell Whatnot is? Let me know. If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.